And then as you come back to all fours, root through the palms and maybe you bring your body weight forward. So think of the crown lengthening into a wall at the top of the mat. So top of the crown lengthens, draw the navel in and close the ribs. And then imagine just gliding back like a table that glides from the crown to the tail. And how far you slide back and how far you glide forward is your choice. But remember that as you glide forward, it's almost like, it's almost as if you come into a knee down plank and you want to retain mindful strength. You don't really want the elbows to bend, but you also don't necessarily want to lock those joints. So you can see that in my demo, I'm just moving mindfully slow as we exhale, I draw the body forward and draw the abdomen in and hover and then breathing in, expanding the back lungs and releasing back. You know that you can also move faster. This is great for the strength of your body and the strength of your bones. Now release to high kneeling. And as you roll the shoulders, and this of course can be slow, medium or fast, then bring the palms into the heart center. So uh, just like a kneeling Tadasana, press the heels of the hands together and level off the pelvis and then sweep open, breathe in and lift. Salute the sun and draw the arms down into your heart center as you exhale. Bowing the gaze, breathe in. Sun salutation, arms, lift extend and exhale. Now, the more that you are capable and easeful of bending backwards and opening this front line, you will feel the strength of the postural muscles ignite. So this is actually really good for the core of the postural muscles and the abdominals. So don't hurt yourself, of course, but just lift out and see if it's okay to really expand into the upper part and then exhale back into the center. I'm gonna release the palms down again, but this time the backs of the palms. So take the hand forward and curl the fingers inwards towards your wrist as if you're scooping something inside your palms and place the back palms onto the mat, quite close to the knees, and then really challenging to let those arms come straight, but see if you can, there might be a slight bend in the heels, and can, you know, try and avoid hunching. So you might need to walk the knees in a little bit more, and you might even be able to send the buttocks back, and essentially press into the back palms, and the wrist is in flexion, and then sit, back down a little bit, rolling, sitting, lifting, and then maybe roll a little side to side over the backs of those palms. Just feel like you're massaging, create a circle as you stir the torso with the back palms pressing down. to side and then just let yourself come back to kneeling and you may just want to gently shake them out or circle the wrists again in both directions you can do any you know this can happen at any time throughout your yoga practice and then release back into all fours at this time, turn your palms outwards. So usually, of course, the fingertips face the short edge of your yoga mat. Now turn the palms out. Don't have to turn all the way, but just see what it feels like. 
Roll the shoulders away from your ears, lengthen your crown, and then slide side to side. So sway to the right, sway to the left. And this is all about healthy nutrition and healthy strength. Positive energy through the chain from the shoulder girdle down to the wrist and from the peripheral wrist and palm and fingers through to the shoulders. So, you know, if you need to rest or not continue in any given posture, that's fine. And then rotate back to the front of the mat. So fingertips to the front of the mat, open up the thumbs, shoulder wide, curl the toes and lift up into down face. Dog. And as you bend your knees, press going towards the thighs. Reach through the right leg long and bending more strongly in the left. And inhale, exhale, and swap. Inhale, exhale, swap. Mindfully pedaling, bending both knees again. Lengthen the right, left knee bent. Bending both knees, lengthen the left leg and see that your alignment is clear. Follow your breath. And then walk the feet in, walk the palms towards your feet. Remember you might be using a yoga block and travel into your firm legs, perhaps you have to bend your knees and release the crown. So a sense of ragdoll, <sighs> deep exhale, and really be clear about the position of your feet. So it's important to connect to the whole foot, center the ankles, see the knees above the ankles and spread out the toes, and then slide your hands onto the shins and lift the sternum, tabletop back. And for some of us, it really is, again, the invitation for a back bend. So powerful, strong spinal muscles. You might even bring your hands up to the hip crease or the thighs. And as you lift your sternum, draw the shoulders away, lift the tail, long crown, and then Straighten the legs if that's okay for you. So we've got the table back, the firm legs or the soft knees, and some of us will reach again for the block and the fingertips come down to the earth. But you might also have your hands on your shins. Allow a few rounds of breath in Ara Uttanasana. Make sure your weight is spreading into the forefeet. Breathe well. So really you've taken a, an action of power and strength in your all fours and transitions that sense of stability into your halfway lift pose. As you exhale, soften the knees in a micro bend, slide the hands down the backs of the ankles and fold deeper. and release the weight of your body. Breathe and fold deeper. What does that mean to you? Now focus into your breathing. You are holding around the backs of your legs. You may be resting onto a yoga brick. A couple of bricks or blocks. And some of us might find that firming the legs is absolutely appropriate. So you may also be in the pose of Uttanasana. Staying for several breaths. This is strengthening your mind and your ability to focus inwards and concentrate. Now ready to breathe one more breath in the folded pose. Slide the hands back onto the shins. Bend the knees strongly, roll the shoulders back, lift into the table back. 
and then sweep the arms out like a T-shape, turn the palms and gather the body and lift up and outwards. Exhaling as you roll the shoulders back and press the palms into the midline. Now, as you come into mountain more definitively, float the arms to the sides and rotate the whole arm column. So turning the thumbs forward, down and back and rolling the thumbs back, round and behind. So spiraling the whole arm. And then we can come into Egyptian arms. So as the right arm rolls forward and down, roll the left arm back. And then as you create a little bit more movement through the shoulders, integrate into your torso. So you find this extra action of lengthening from side to side. Breathing through, even if you have to release the breath through the mouth. Now roll the shoulders again and spread out through the toes. Take the right arm over the left, cross high, and then open out. Inhale, exhale, left arm over right. Spiral all the way from the wrists as well. Right arm over left, open and faster if you can. If that's comfortable or good for you to get a little more healthy nourishment and open the chest. And now bring the right arm over the left, cross at the elbows and find Garudasana arms, the eagle. And once you are in your eagle arms, by the way, of course the option is just to draw your elbows together in a single binding. When you have your eagle arms, steady energy, gazing into the distance, start to root through that left leg and we've got the right arm on top. So we'll just easily cross the right thigh over the left. You could put the right foot onto your left shin or you can double bind depending on the flexibility of the legs and imagine just sitting into a high chair. It's keeping the torso stable, steady and calm. Relax the mouth and face and breathe. And stay for as many breath cycles as you can. Focus, concentrate, stabilize, but also in a relaxed attitude of acceptance. And then release from your right side, right side eagle. Roll the arms back. Step the feet mat wide. And as you roll the shoulders, interlace the whole fingers together behind your back, squeeze the triceps into the midline, or consider just hooking your thumbs or holding a yoga belt. But expose and expand the chest. So I do want you, when you come into that arm pose, please, as you roll back, to actually lift the chest away so that you do come into the expansion. Feet face forward, mat wide, roll back, even consider a little lean back and then glance to the earth in neutral, tip forward, soften the knees and you can be in the halfway lift position with the table back and the crown lengthening away or deep dive. Drop into the hip creases, folding at the pelvis and release your arms where they release to is your body's decision and mindfully roll the shoulders. Close your eyes. You might choose to bend the knees and then straighten the legs and firm them. 
wherever you are, relaxing. Soften the mouth. Breathe out through the mouth. Tipping into the balls of the feet. Strong Hatha Yoga invites remaining in a pose to really feel connected and to increase the benefits of the mind, body, breath and soul connection. Stay and be mindful of all sensations. Feel the shoulders perhaps moving a little more or moving less. Or what are you noticing? And then release your arms. Don't be surprised if it feels a little achy. And then press through the feet and hollow the belly and slide your hands up the legs maybe. Just looking into the belly, looking into yourself. Slide to restack. Last thing to come up is the head and generous rolling of the shoulders. Shake out your legs and prepare acceptance, compassion and kindness for eagle on the second side. So mounting. Draw the left arm over the top of the right as high as you can as you bend the elbows. Your right palm comes closer to your face, of course, for most of us, and then you double bind, or you've moved into single binding. And in actual fact, the left arm's over right. You can even create this hug arm pose as an alternate if you wish. So find something really appropriate to your physical body, but also that small challenge which means to perfect the Garudasana arm position, we try not to just let the arms drag down into a collapse. You pull the elbows forward and away from the shoulders and draw the shoulders down. So you might find, can you also align those wrists? So remember we started our practice today, quite a lot of that wrist mobility and even as I said, you, you would want to clasp and create those circles and those figures of eights. And you can do that while you're watching telly. You know, just add in these invitations to mobilize the wrists um, at, outside of your yoga practice. You are rooting through the right leg and crossing the left thigh over. And just standing into your single mountain, Ekapada Tadasana, or you might be double wrapping and coming into that bent knee position. So choose wisely and then relax the face. Level the crown, eyes to your horizon. And please just notice again the invitation for lengthening the tailbone so that you access the midline postural muscles. Obviously you don't wanna hug the belly into the point where you cannot breathe, but be in the place where you have a well-rounded balance. No single leg mountain wants you just to be standing on your ankles. You will feel the ankle muscles and joints wobble. That's the appropriate section. And if you've come out and back in, and you're doing something like this, you know, it's absolutely fine. So practice the pose the second time if you've left it or the third time. Qualities of steadfast, strength and stability. Garudasana, the eagle. And then release and shake out your legs. Come to the top of the practice mat or towards the top. Spread out the feet and sun salutation. Circle the arms up to the sky. Lift up. Exhale. Reach forward. Take the hands to the tops of the thighs. Soften the knees. A halfway lift. Crown lengthens away. Find your breath. Inhale as you exhale. Soften knees or not and fold more deeply, Uttanasana. And then walk the palms 
into earth, pressing, and step back to Kumbha Kastana Yoga Plank. You can, of course, bring your inner ankles together, or you can separate your legs. So be wise about how you can maintain your plank. Once again, the action repeating here is the crown lengthening away and the table back steady. And slide back onto the heels. So push back but try not to lift your buttocks as if you're moving into down dog. And then slowly sway forward. And the movement is just three or four centimeters. But as you sway forward and back, so you're coming onto the toes and the tippy toes, and you're sliding back, you're trying to keep the imagination of the torso just gliding. You might be able to do this five more times or three times, or you may have chosen to bring the knees down and repeat the first swaying cat movement. Now bring your knees down anyway, and bring a fist into the right palm, and lift and circle that left arm. Or you can bring your block here. Extend your left arm forward, reach, circle and release. And you can always come up to high kneeling if that is more appropriate for your body. Press away. I'm gonna repeat into the left side. Making a fist on the left arm or coming up into a block, reach the right arm forward, up and around. <sighs> Creates a little rotation of the uh, torso, or as I say, come to high kneeling and circle your arm. And then back into the all fours, curl the toes, lifting up into down face dog. Root through both heels, so bending knees. Crouching dog, or extending through both heels, firming the legs. Draw the front thighs towards the back thighs. And then reach your right leg up and back. Extend through the right leg, balance your efforts. Step the right foot forward. And engage the left heel and rising into warrior. So mountain in the torso, right knee above the ankle, anchor back with a powerful left leg. Remember in warrior one, Virabhadrasana one first warrior, the left leg is firm, right knee above the ankle. Breathe in, imagine you're holding a gift. Reach the arms up overhead, depending on your shoulders, Interlace the fingers, turn the knuckles away, or just keep holding that gift above the head. Roll away. Some of us have got a narrow box above the head and some a large box. And if it's narrow and you have created Bada Hasta, Hasta Bada, which is the bound hand position, squeeze the ears, squeeze the arms around the ears, and lift the roots away in one unit. Inhale, exhale, release the arms, interlace behind into chest expander, point the fingers or hook the thumbs, and then rotate your body to the left as if you're trying to bring the left side of the ribs towards the left thigh. So it's like a version of side angle. What I would say is that your left heel and left ankle may have to turn in. So you might just have to adjust the position of your hips to allow this to happen with uh, consideration to your hips. So chest expander arms, turn the torso, and you're bending into that right knee and lengthening 
the right side of the body down towards that right thigh. Likely the body hasn't rested on the thigh. So keep extending, pulling the shoulders back. Lengthen the crown and then release. Bring the right elbow onto the right thigh. Press away, left arm lifts. So you use the bones of the arm to create a good 90 degree angle in the leg and bring the left arm over ear if it can or it's pressing to the sky. Draw up through those ribs. So pay attention to the bottom side of your torso as well as that top side. If you want to bring the hand to the ankle, move into your Utita version, you can. Your choice. And then lift up, pivot, and return to warrior one. So lift out the ball onto the ball of the left foot, raise up onto lifting the heel of that back foot, open strongly, strongly as you can, and then bring the palms to heart and step forward. And breathe, press the heels of the hands together in a powerful namaste. So again, connect to your feet as you close your eyes. Breathe in and out through the nose, connecting powerfully to concentrated, conscious yoga breathing. Calmly, three or four, Calm, full rounds of breath. What are you noticing about the emotions, your energy, your mood, about your patience or impatience? How you respond to an invitation to breathe with full attention. And where is your attention? And how attentive is your attention? And after the next breath, just retain the mudra which is namaste with strength, and raise those heels of the hands to land on top of the crown, draw the elbows out, reconnect to your feet, make sure the knees aren't overly locked, and invitation to side bend. So Pajra Tadasana, try not to crowd down, yeah, no collapsing. So from your mountain, roll the elbows back, Right elbow moves away to the right. Can you peel the left elbow back? Pause and breathe. Center. In your pace, purely bend to the side and encourage the stability and the postural awareness into that midline. So everybody moving to the left and to the right. In this version of Tiriyaka Tadasana is finding a connectivity to corsetry, just enough corsetry around your midline, and that is encouraging these oblique muscles. Now, if for any reason the hands on the head is just a problem to your, to your pose, then moderate. You know, you can bring the fingers onto the shoulders, you can even bring the fingers down to the waist. Yeah, so find a place where your postural movement improves. Remember that you improve as you move and you move to improve. And it really works together. So 
So when you ache and you feel sluggish and dull, you ache and feel sluggish and dull because you're not doing enough. And your body is crying out for nourishment. It's crying out for healthy, healthy mobility and healthy strength. Breathe all the way through. And then center when you are completed. Draw the arms back into the heart center. And we'll just finish this flow practice. Simple, mindful, strong flow on the second side. So being at the top of your practice mat, sweep the arms out in, salute the sun, inhale, inhale, lift the heart, and exhale. You're going to reach forward and come to Ardha Uttanasana, maybe soften the knees a little bit, the crown lengthens away. And you may also have the option of reaching the fingernails to the earth and drawing that sternum forward. Inhale again as you exhale, folding in more deeply. Follow that belly, draw the chest down over the legs, crown descends. Breathe well. And, you know, give yourself time for the poses to evolve, for the poses to come to you. And then you're gonna press the hands in front and step back to Kumbhakasana, the plank pose. And just adjust, so maybe step those palms, shoulder on that wide, squeeze the legs together or apart. Stay steady and then flip onto the outer edge of the right foot, Step the left foot in front and T-shaped arms open out. Remember, you can have your knees down. Return to plank, steady. And then outer edge of left foot, right foot forward. T-arms open out the chest. Steadiness or you have your knees down. And release to plank and bring the knees down and just surrender back into child's pose, resting, touch the forehead, inhale, exhale, spread the thumbs away from the hands, fingers root well, shoulders roll back, down face dog. And I know we didn't do the arm circles, but it's fine. Just did those on the first round. Reach the left hip and leg up and back, hip extension or dog hip opener and balance your efforts to make sure the right leg is powerfully strong or you have bent the right leg, that's absolutely fine. And bring the left foot forward and take your time. Turn the right heel in and down a little. Look forward and rise to first warrior. Shoulders above the hips. Hold a gift, reach the arms overhead. Center the body. Of course your arms can come out wide or they go narrow. Press the palms together or interlace and roll the knuckles away and turn the little fingers backwards. Calm, steady, gazing. Back leg is powerfully strong. Thigh muscle in the back leg hugging, but your left knee is in a definitive right angle, knee above ankle, and you're stacked, or you are reaching up and back. And roll the arms away, interlace, chest expand, and then turn, and as you turn, likely bring your right ankle, drawing to a diagonal, so that you can come a little more into a side opening. So we are leaning the left ribs to the left thigh. Because you don't have any arms, it's an invitation again for strength and power in the legs. So if you have to straighten your legs and lean this way, that's also another option. So I have two firm legs, regular, I would say this is really 
the welcoming of a regular Trikonasana style leg or side angle. Pull the shoulders away, lengthen, and importantly, breathe well. And then lift, release the left elbow to the or forearm to the thigh. Spread the right arm up and overhead. Draw the shoulders into the back or coming into Utita Pajvakanasana, which usually means you spread your legs a little deeper so that your pelvis is lower. And your left fist is inside or outside the ankle or shin. And exhale, breathe mindfully, calmly. Offer the best posture to yourself today in this present moment. Now as you rise back, pivot forward and hop that heel away. So the ball of the back foot presses, realign that left knee above the hip, and return to first warrior. Try not to buckle into that back leg. Lift upwards, ribs draw away from the pelvis, and then mindful as the arms come to heart, and you step forward and you've landed back into mountain. Come easy breathing. And then you may want to take hold of your blanket and your yoga block one or both of those and return to sitting sitting in any comfortable yoga style but I would also always encourage you to be cross-legged we're going to interlace the fingers in front of the heart again and come back to those wrist mobility circles so you're turning the wrist, they're bound together, and then you're going to create the figure of eight. So rolling into the infinity symbol, and then can go a little faster, get the heat around the joint, and then move in the other direction. So circles or figures of eight, Spreading out through your thighs, breathing well, and then just twisting, twisting, turning, turning, and then up and down, up and down. Push the wrist down, pull it up, push down and up, push down and up. Free the fingers and spread the right arm over to the right. And as you press the heel of the hand into the mat plank like again, Rotate the left shoulder back and let the left arm draw away from you. And then reach it over the ear, roll the gaze down, tuck in and thread. So draw out, up and back, press the arms away. So almost like a seated form of Trikonasana, spread out through the chest, and then left arm over the ear, really powerful side bend, rotate your torso, please look down, and then bend the right elbow and try and thread through. Release up, press away, and center, roll your shoulders. Spread the left palm over to the left, connect powerfully, and as you bring this right shoulder back, open the chest, turn right and release the right arm out. And then it lifts up and over and then peel to rotate and then attempt to turn and thread. One side might be easier than the other side. Roll up open, back, look to the back palm, breathe, and then again, seated side bend, twist, turn, 
and thread. And then release your body to lie down. And as you come to lying, connect the heels of your feet and the powerful feet to the heels of your sit bones. And as you roll your body down to earth, you can press the arms out into a wide warrior two T-shaped style, or you might choose to bring your arms overhead and then lengthen your spine, press through the feet and glide into shoulder bridge, Setu Bandhasana, pausing here, lengthen the neck, make space, back of skull is resting and close the eyes. Breathe calmly. Now exhale. And then slowly release each segment of your spine. And as you land into the earth, draw the knees into the chest. Light massage of your back. And please choose to remain in supine semi as your feet land on the earth or find closing Shavasana pose. Now arrange your arms appropriately. It's sometimes really helpful and soothing to land a palm onto your belly, or you may just want to let your arms drape beside you. So start to organize, sort of tidy up your posture so that you offer the quality of self-care to the relaxation pose. And of course, make sure you're warm enough. The physiological state of rest usually takes even 15 minutes to achieve in the body, but we are in a morning class and I am offering you this next six minutes to really descend or you can stay lying for five minutes. Yeah, so just offer the quality of this practice, even though we are not here for 15 or 20 minutes of Shavasana today. Shoulders drop away from your ears. Travel through your body. First of all, the front body, softening the collarbones, chest, your belly, your frontal hips, your knees, shins, tops of the feet. Inhale, exhale and descend and soften. Now into the back body. Be aware of the heels and the calf muscles spreading the backs of the knees, backs of the thighs and the buttocks releasing. Linger around the low back, mid back and upper back. Just allow awareness to settle there. Observe your breathing in the back, the sides and the front of your body. And again, lower the shoulders, widen the shoulder blades. And then linger at the back of your neck. And you may want to just lightly lift your head and reposition your head. So oftentimes when we lay down, we form even in lying incorrect postural habits and we drop all of our weight through the left or all through the right. So see if you can apply a relaxation in a centered way. So really allowing the left and the right to be evenly releasing. And then bring your awareness 
to the tip of the nose and to the left nostril and the right nostril. And in yoga, of course, we call these channels nadis. And there are about 70 to 75,000 nadis in the body. They correlate with meridians in the Chinese system. They, they quite closely correlate with other Eastern philosophies about healthy energy. On the wind and the vayu of your breathing, you carry the positive energy of prana. So I'd like you today to visualize pure nourishing energy flowing in through the left and right nostril. And you can give this a color if you wish. Note if any color comes to mind without seeking a color. So drawing in that fresh pranic energy. Expanding the lungs, the ribs, at the front, back and sides. Opening your chest. Flourishing, blossoming the breath. And then softly sigh away. And as you sigh away, associate that long, Sign exhale with the releasement of your physical body. Stillness encourages peace and peaceful thinking encourages stillness. So continue to focus closely on your breathing. And the releasement of the muscles, the physical body and the stillness. Just for two more rounds. And then please gently, keeping the torso very still, bend the knees, place the feet flat if you're in Shavasana, and roll your legs, easy floor twist, left and right. We're lying on the back and just letting the pelvis turn with grace, but keeping your shoulders relaxed. And then of course you can hug the knees into your chest, roll to your side and calmly return to seated. Sitting, find that one more mindful breath of calm and stillness. And let's bring the palms to the heart center. Deep gratitude to yourself for your presence here today. The ongoing health of your body and mind, breath and emotions.